And, <laughs> but you need to be patient with us to say, hey, I'll give it to you. Could you please use it? This is it. All right? So that's where the GPAP came in. Now, the GPAP, I have to say, was created out of that first need that Mr. Skitton. Can you make a pack? Right? That ten a pack equal to ping pong. That's what this days in Jamaica. 36 notes and all of them clean. If you play pack, you'll know that you don't have a ten a pack with 36 notes. And oh gosh, those notes in the middle, not key. Alright? So that was a challenge. And I tell them, well yes, I could do it. <laughs> I got to him with what was the predecessor of the five, because in fact, what he had asked me to do was in a bigger um, proposal that was written in 1987, um, submitted to the then Jennifer Johnson, uh, the NAR government. I would like to believe, and um, I hope many, many people do this, right? <laughs> um, I'd like to believe at that early initiative when we launched the uh, Carrick Tokyo uh, initiative with Amplified Band. Um, I was going away to study in, in Los Angeles and I did this proposal up and I said, Minister, this is the future plan right here. Can we take this forward? And then I understand afterwards that some of that was discussed. And then the funding that came out around 1987 that built some of the planning arts and created a plan investment fund and so on came out of that. And I'm taking credit for it and I'm saying as well as what I feel. Alright? So I have checked it out and I don't really want to. But the fact is that it was an old proposal. So when he came and spoke about the plan, I pulled it out and we very Jim and I very quickly put together a proposal to, to the government for this. The Genesis process then um, project then was to design and fabricate a new family of pans that significantly improved on the current art. Um, we think we've done it as well, but it's take thick map there, right? And pulled everywhere, boy, I love those pieces. Right? Um, and I have to tell you, the bases that we have, I say this very carefully, right? The bases that we have will develop, um, yes, they look like the normal bases, but I'm telling you, it's high school technology that makes them sound really good. We haven't been looking enough at our inventions. It's not rocket science thing. Right. It's clean, I'll show you why some of the time this comes. A lot of it comes because of the kind of material we're using, quality steel, which I'm going to leave it, right? and Terry Kushlow, close to the corner. It goes by the door in case they have to run. Help us in looking at the metallurgy and putting together some of the forms. But we do come about the weight, and I'm sad to say it's the weight that makes it sound the way it does. You have to be on pricing more quality. We work on the weight later. Anyway, the extended range of three octaves minimum. And where did I get that? If you look at any instruments of any real use, um, uh, 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 of any real use, um, they typically have three octaves. Some may have slightly less. Fruits, for example, I think slightly less. Where is left between three octaves and more. We wanted the upper range extended to include all of octaves six. We haven't done that yet. A reduction in number of instrument text required for an orchestra. Well, where did I get flat for that one? Uh, where's the number channel? I don't know. <laughs> um, again, I looked at um, traditional um, orchestration. At one point in time, there were like seven members in the string family. And there was four, right? You had the violins and the cellos and so on. Why? Because they had overlapping ranges and so on. And of course, by the time, they're sticky of some things, right? And I looked at the pan family, I've seen 11. And more. I said, no, 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 this can't be. If you want to build an industry, you have to focus. And we decided we will go right before the three. We have a three. We had a, a soprano, which is a tenor, a triple panel with the G3 men, and we had a G6 piece. And then uh, Sat Shama, who unfortunately has a class at this point in time, a uh, principal, supposedly, she has it. It's just after and off. <laughs> four, the <and> four. <laughs> Sat Shama came and said, no, man, you, you can't. You can't, you cannot go without a double pan. Uh, you need a double pan to support the tenor, or right? a single pan. And so we threw in a, a double second, which is the normal style. We wanted to rationalize the note layout. If you look at pans, especially like 10 years before, lots of different note layouts, the fourth and fifth layout on the tenor pan has now become essentially a standard. When you get a stance to use the third and fourth, which are different arrangement of notes. Um, but you see again, if it is looking to build an industry, 
you have to standardize and you have to rationalize your product. You can't have it all over the place. Yes, it could be custom made ones, but your rag and fiber core, you have to standardize that. So we stuck on the fourth and fifth, and we used fourth and fifth everywhere as much as we could. Fourth and fifth on the teller, but we're going to be triple down, we put fourth and fifth there. Right? Basically split it in. You know what fourth and fifth is three. So you take a tender pan, one, two, three bags. You go here, you go here, you go here, three bags. And then the same thing for the base, which there are fourth and fifth base is a common thing. I found a law after two million, you see why I like it? Give that with panel stars, all those bands. I found one for fourth and fifth, every single one. And you know what too? He also had only four voices in his band, his, his side band was that. Right? So um, I think that quite a lot of people in newspapers when they found that out. But um, it was great to me that, you know, I mean, I don't know band all that well, yeah. But um, Bobby Warman, his cabinet, played for my father many years. But um, I, I, I played the instrument, I could, could tell all the tunes I could play. I was studying music from a scientific point of view. And I was able to come up with a solution I told you to come up with years before. I thought that was great. Um, and the professional quality, materials and engineering construction, well, we've done that in the politic market. All right, this is just some quick clip flies. This was shown last year, sorry, year before, July 17th. This is the Japan in making. We use high quality steel uh, from the US, and we went even further next round. Okay. Um, uh, we've known for years what kind of methodology must be required on, on, the, on, on, the, on the steel. Typically, people tell us something for the 06 percent carbon. Steel is carbon plus iron. Very, very low impurities. That's the main secret right there. That's it. Right? That's in the literature. We didn't have to pull that out. So, we sourced that steel. And a couple other properties we were looking for. But we made everything, including um, that ring, that is the rim of the pan. This is the top being cut. And then we made a special jig, um, and Terry's credited with that, that put a little flange on that top so it could fit inside the ring, and then it's all welded together. I like the shot, sorry, it's my photographer as well. <laughs> I tell you about the special <laughs> this is This is a G pad drum next to a traditional drum. This is a bunch of Spaniard, it's much bigger than the normal one. Alright, and the note. This is the wide range of current traditional pans here. Nine bees or what? Uh, sorry, nine bees. Uh, nine bees, I mean, you know, so six down here, three up here. All right, so the dynamics of the 600 crown has to be different from the three up in here, right? You do not get the same sound from those three here like that as, as you do for the ones on the ground. In fact, some pans, some pans, some pans, some pans, take those no three up in the ground for the same reason because there's some science going on there too. All right, these are all four ranges down here. You can see the range. Look at the range of the current um, the traditional ones. See it? So the G base, G6 base goes down lower than just about anybody else. Even in super nine base, that's six rounds. Five notes on each G6 base. Five. That's 13 notes, two and a half years. And then the G6 tenor, when it was designed to be C, we pull it out to A for clarity. We're supposed to overlap it. We get it there. All right, this is the design that we have. So basically, you have strong overlap. Look at the base. The base actually goes into middle C on the tenor. Into middle C, right? That's a very, very wide range, right, of musical notes. And when I found them, is your son here? Yes, sir. Oh, no, we shine. Come on. Oh, sorry. Sorry. All right. And Jason talks about what's the vertical layering of the orchestration to make it sound like one and four voices. Is that what it is? I wrong with what he's saying as we Alright, here's a problem we have. This is where our problems lie. Right? Musical notes, uh, it's like a bit made up of little blocks, right? Um, each musical note you get is made up of, of basic pure tones. So if you talk about um, uh, a reference tone of E, the pure tone there will, will, is a sinusoid as we call it. Um, that's by we're at 440 cycles a second. A sinusoid is really actually just a dot moving around. What you get with a dot moving around is still at constant speed, just like you mean on your car. Right? And if you were to translate that, look at the shadow of it on the ground, you'll see that dot moving like this. And then if you were to plot it over time, you know, like when you see those charts, on the doctor's charts and so on, you actually see a nice curvy waveform like this. 